I wrote the program for this in CAD CAM. I had the program dumped out, and here it is. Look at all these pages. Four and a half pages of code. Or I can do this. The old G71. I could take four and a half pages worth of code and condense it down into this. You guessed it. In this video, we're going to be covering G71, a can cycle that I like to use for rough turning. Hey team, this is Luca, Practical Machinist, and welcome back for another episode of The Lane Lab. Today, we're going to be making this part. I wrote the program for this in CAD CAM, but wait, I need to make a change to the program. I need to change the depth of cut or material allowance for my finisher. Now I'm going to go back to CAM, rewrite the program, dump it in again, and prove it out. We're going to be going about that in an interesting way. I'm going to show you what a G71 code looks like at the actual program itself. We're going to dive a little bit deeper into that and kind of dissect the code. So this is a G71 two line, which is what I like to use. Now, let's go right back to the beginning for a minute. Imagine you have your print with all your dimensions and your features, either ID or OD or boring or uh, inside journey or outside journey. You draw off your model, you make your program, you got all your geometry set. That rough geometry is going to be encapsulated in the end codes, N200 or N300, whatever they might be. N1, N2. Now, that's going to be the beginning of your geometry at the first end line and the end of your geometry at the last end line. All your geometry is going to be encapsulated in those end lines. Those end lines then are related to the P and Q of the second line of the G71. So N1, the first line, would be your P0001 or your line at your last end line N2 would be Q0001. So the second line of that G71, the P and the Q reference that N1 or N line, first end lines and the last end line. So as I can see here, the first line of your G71 has a U and an R. The U is your depth of cut per side. So U.05 will be 50 thousandths depth of cut. Your R, in this case is R.1 on my program, is your retract value. How much is it going to come off the material in a feed motion before it reference back to your approach? That's the first line. The second line is your G71P0001, Q0002, those correspond to the end, end, code, end lines. After that is your U values, another U value, but the U value on line two is different than the U value on line one. The U value on line two is your material allowance. How much material are you gonna leave on that diameter for your finished tool to clean up? I like to leave the nose radius. We've talked about that in other videos on my channel before. A fractable Machinist has covered it oftentimes and from different content creators. Your nose radius is how big of a radius is on the cutting edge of your insert. For example, WRC NMG 432, the last number of two is your nose radius that increments to 64. 264 is about 031. So if your finish tool is a two nose radius, which is 031, I would leave that material allowance at 031, minimum. Maybe want to go a little bit more Maybe want to go a little bit less based upon your surface finish needs, chip control and tool life, etc. The next one is your W value on this line two of the G71. That's your material allowance on Z. Your Z axis is this way. How much material are you going to leave on the different faces to clean up from your finisher? A lot of that varies shop to shop and what you need. I find it might start giving five thousandths and above, I start to get chatter when I come up the face. I like to give it a couple thousands, and if you need to change it, what's nice about the G71, you don't have to go in and reprogram the, the part. Go into the G71 code, modify that W value. The last 
uh, fitted that on that line to the G71 as your F. Of course, that's your feed rate. Future videos, we're going to touch more on that about the feed rate, but I like to keep it between one third to two thirds of the nose radius. You have a 432 as your rough hook. Two of those radius about 031. One third of that is about 10,000. That would be my minimum feed rate for a rumper to manage the chip. My maximum will be two thirds, about 20. I usually don't run it up that high. A lot of shops do. People with a little bit more courage, courage and oop than I have will run it at 20 and higher. I like to stay in that one third to two thirds nose radius rule. So now that we've actually dissected the G71 cone, I want to show you that code running and I want to show you the code that we wrote and the part that we made with it, which is here. Wonderful, right? You watched the machine run. Whoever wrote that program did an excellent job. Just kidding. I want to talk now about what are the benefits of the G71 and why I prefer to use it. One of them, take five pages worth of code. Now I have three quarters of the page worth of code. That doesn't matter on your control. It's not going to take up that much more memory. The reason I bring that up though, is it simplifies it for you and your offering. If you have to go in and make a program change, whatever that program change might be, good luck diving through five pages worth of code. You can go right in here, your geometry, your finished part geometry is in, encapsulated in those end lines, easy to change. Most of the time you're not gonna have to like, go in and change the geometry, but if you do, now you know how. Another reason I like to, I can vary my depth of cut with one change of a button. Well, what one value in the G71. If we wanted to change depth of cut for the five page program we have, you're not gonna go in there and do it by hand, it's five pages. You gotta go back to the cam software, reprogram it, dump it back in and prove it out. Here, you can just change that U value to vary your depth of cut or uh, a get. And also, material allowance. Say I want to give my, my finisher more or less material. Sure, you could offset your rubber to give him more. That's not by modus operandi. I want to do it the right way instead of just offsetting the tool a random amount. I want to go in and say I want to change it instead of giving it 10 towel material allowance on X, I want to give it 20. I go in there and change it. If I want to give myself more or less on the, um, on the face, I go in and change the W. The G71 is a can cycle that's supposed to simplify our job as programmers, operators, and setup people. That's what it's for, and boy does it work. Years ago, I didn't use the G71. I was a little bit stuck in my ways. To be honest, I really didn't know how to program. But I learned through CAM, Fusion 360 in the spring, on how to do it. And then I slowly started teaching myself a little bit more, seeing how they did it, and now I couldn't imagine life without it. This part here is a lot of cold to turn it down from about one in five A stock down to whatever that tip might be. G71 simplifies it. With the change of a value, I can change my depth of cut, my material allowance on X and Z. For those reasons, I am team G71, and I think you should be also. Dive into it. If you're in a turning shop, try it. If a lot of cam softwares, it's just a button. Can cycle, yes or no. Bada bing, bada boom. So in conclusion, G71 is the way to go. Let me know your thoughts down below. Do you use it? Do you agree with my um, 
my recommendations on depth of cut and chip load for your rough and finishing tool. What do you think and what would you want to see? Like, subscribe to Practical Machinist. Once again, my name is Luke with the Lathe Lab. You can also find me at Crusader Machining on Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, and YouTube. Give me a follow. Give me a shout. The good, the bad, the ugly, I'm here for it. Thank you again for watching, and we will see you next time.